This is the second in a five-part series of short vignettes honoring the anniversary of the Great New England Hurricane of 1938. This segment will discuss the mechanisms that foster the rapid acceleration to New England and the production of remarkably heavy rainfall and river flooding here in New England. As our hurricanes make their way toward the northeast, they are undergoing what we call an extratropical transition, leaving the pure tropical state and becoming more like a winter storm. Interactions with the jet stream are a key driver behind that very complex change in the storm's behavior. The result of these interactions, first off, is rapid acceleration to New England. As I like to say, New England hurricanes are in for breakfast and gone by dinner. Take the 1938 hurricane, for example, making the trip from Hatteras, North Carolina to Providence in eight hours. With a remarkable forward speed at landfall of at least 51 miles an hour, and by some estimates, accelerating at over 60 miles an hour, We've had many an accelerating system here in the Northeast. Some of the more notable ones include Carol in 1954, Gloria in 1985, and more recently, Tropical Storm Irene in 2011. It's no accident that when hurricanes do not accelerate so dramatically here in the Northeast, they are the ones that are capable of producing remarkable river flooding from torrential rainfall. So what makes a hurricane make its way so rapidly to the Northeast? When a jet stream approaches western New York and there is a hurricane in the Bahamas, many times the warm heating in the upper atmosphere flowing out from the hurricane in the Bahamas interacts with this approaching jet stream to its north or northwest. The results are dramatic. Explosive intensification of the jet stream core with wind speeds at over 40,000 feet in the atmosphere at over 160 knots. This complex cast of characters and this very complex interaction results in hurricanes accelerating northward. And where that interaction occurs also dictates where the heaviest rainfall would occur. Here in the northeast, these interactions will typically lead to heaviest rainfall west of the storm track. Due to the explosiveness with the jet stream interaction, complexities with the pre-existing cold front, and also that moist tropical onshore flow being lifted up over the high terrain of interior New England. So let's look at the rainfall characteristics. Here you have two radar images from Hurricane Bob in 1991. At 1 a.m. in the morning, some 12 hours before the center would make landfall in Newport, Rhode Island, notice two things. The core of heaviest rainfall is already repositioning itself north of the center, and the leading edge of the rain bands are already approaching the coast of southern New England. Very common characteristics for a New England hurricane. But by 2 p.m. as the center comes ashore in Newport, Rhode Island, notice that the entire eastern semicircle of the hurricane is nearly rain-free. The heaviest rainfall is now positioned along and west of the storm track. Very classic changing of the behavior of a New England hurricane as it accelerates northward. The average rainfall with our landfalling systems, typically 6 to 8 inches of rain, and most of that falling in less than 12 hours. So if we look at the rainfall distribution associated with Bob, again with that storm center moving from Hatteras to Newport, notice the corridor of 5 to as much as 9 inches of rain was positioned west of the track. Of the two types of distributions we see in New England, this by far is the most classic example. But Hurricane Carol in 1954 was a bit more unique. In her case, we didn't have a jet stream positioned to the west. Instead, the jet stream was located over Nova Scotia, and it actually built westward, or back built over the northeast, and it produced the greatest lift high in the atmosphere directly north of her track. For that reason, we produced the heaviest rainfall slightly east and along the track of the storm. Irene need no introduction, but she behaved herself as a classic New England hurricane from a rainfall distribution standpoint. Tropical storm Irene came ashore near the southwest corner of Long Island in the eastern shore of Jersey and then tracked right up the spine of the Berkshires and into the White Mountains of northern New England. That put eastern New England on her relatively rain-free windy side. But it put all of western New England and much of eastern New York in the corridor of remarkably heavy rainfall one foot to as much as 15 inches of rain came down in between 9 and 12 hours duration, overducing, as we know now, devastating river and flash flooding. So where does the 1938 hurricane fit in this sequence of events? It would appear that we had a more classic evolution of events. With a cold front prepositioned over the Connecticut Valley, it had rained for five days, uh, upwards of 5 to 7 inches of rain, in fact, over much of the lower Connecticut Valley before the 38 hurricane arrived. So we had a frontal system already positioned in the northeast and a large trough of low pressure in the upper atmosphere over the Great Lakes. As the 38 hurricane approached, one more impulse at the jet stream level dipped into that trough over the Ohio Valley, captured and caused the 38 hurricane to accelerate rapidly toward New England. And the result, as we know now, 
was devastating river flooding and flash flooding over much of interior western New England. In our next segment, I'll discuss the behavior of the wind field associated with our tropical systems as they accelerate into New England.